Romans chapter 9 this morning. All right, let's see. Everybody stand if you would. We'll read a few verses from Romans chapter 9, beginning about the sixth verse. It says, Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of promise are counted for their seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son, and not only this, but when Rebekah also is conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, not of works, but of him that called. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. And it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Let it not return void this day. Touch our hearts in a way, Lord, they will uh, know that it's been good to be in the house of the Lord this day. Forgive us for any of our sins and shortcomings. It's in Christ's name I ask it all. Amen. I know what I was going to say while ago. We, we, we now have a, a nursery worker. So uh, tell your friends and neighbors that if they have young children, they can bring them to church and have a, a, a nursery. Then it will be provided by the church, okay? So remember that. Um. Uh, we try to, when we're, when we're reading from God's Word and we, we try to study and I preach from God's Word, uh, you try to get something from the message each and every week, or I hope that you do, or I pray that you do. It reminds me of a, a sermon this man was preaching one day, and he was preaching that uh, on, the, on forgiveness and forgiving those who are your enemies. He says that, uh, he went on with his preaching, and he preached for 30 minutes, and he wanted to see what kind of response he was getting, so he asked the church, uh, how many in here has now forgiven their enemies? And about 50% of the church raised their hand. So he, he started preaching, he preached some more. So he went on for another 15 minutes, and he preached. Now he's up to 45 minutes, and he asked them, said, uh, who in here has... Uh, forgiven your enemies this morning. Well, this time it was up to about 80% of the church. Finally, he just went on preaching. And he preached and it ended up as an hour. And he just kept preaching and finally he said, now how many in here has forgiven your enemies? And all of the church raised their hand except one woman. One little lady sitting in a pew. And he he noticed that it, she was the only one in church. So he asked her, said, well, Miss Jones said, uh, I see you didn't raise your hand. Did you, did, have you not forgiven your enemies? And she said, uh, sir, I don't have any enemies. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, really? He said, uh, I, I tell you what, you come up front up here and you explain to the church why you don't have any enemies. We want to know this. So the little lady got up and come to the front. And I asked her again, she said, relate to us, if you would, why you don't have any enemies. He said, well, preacher, I'm 93 years old, and I have outlived the old hags. <laughs> <laughs> so we now get something from the lesson. <laughs> the Apostle Paul is writing in the book of Romans, and uh, sometimes I have difficulties with uh, uh, not being a Bible scholar and, and trying to get what uh, Paul is trying to say. So this morning, uh, you just follow along with me, and we'll try to learn together this morning. If you look in these verses this morning, 
if the Jews have rejected and then crucified Christ on the cross, the Son of the very Son of God, does that mean that God's purposes in setting the Jewish people aside was his was his plan? Was it defeated? Was it uh, his, had it become frustrated? Paul provides us an argument this morning from from Bible history to prove that that is not true. God has not given up on the Jews. God has not given up on the nation of Israel. But there is some facts that we got to look at that kind of kind of kind of separates us from from the world. <clears throat> You know that we know that right now the Jewish people do not believe, most of them do not believe in Jesus Christ. And most of them. There are some that do. But the most of them do not. So when we think about that, God chose them as his chosen people. But think about this. They rejected so that gave us the opportunity to be saved. Without that rejection, I'm not sure. Do you think about that? If, if they hadn't rejected Christ, where would we be left? Because this was Jews. Christ was a Jew. The disciples were Jews. If they had not rejected him, how would we have been saved in that time? We won't go there right now, but Abraham's seed uh, reproduced. We know that the, the Jewish people are descended through Abraham, right? This is where we came. And we talk about the children of Abraham and uh, being descendants of Abraham. The Jewish people take pride in the fact that they are descendants of Abraham. But what the Apostle Paul is trying to point out, I think, this morning is that all of, not all of the descendants of Abraham were chosen people. Not all of them were chosen. Abraham had a lot of children that were not chosen because of the specific lineage that they went through. Uh, We know that the disciples of Jesus Christ were Hebrews. And it's also, it was the faithful remnant of Israel always were to be the heir of promise. That that God gave as a promise. Uh, he promised, back in the Old Testament, he promised that the children of Israel would be his people, that he would set them aside. <clears throat> but when we want to talk about this morning is the faithful remnant. Those who still believed in God. You know, Jewish people today still believe in God. And those that believe in the Messiah will be saved, just like you and I are. Uh, they don't believe as Jesus Christ, but if they have faith in the Messiah, they will be saved. If they're the family of God. But we want to talk about this morning the Israel within Israel. So what are we talking about? As I mentioned earlier, Abraham had a lot of children. Uh, and he had a lot of descendants. But not all of them were considered his chosen people. Uh, you know he had a son, Ishmael, by his concubine and we know that he was the firstborn and he was he was the elder and he was circumcised just like he was supposed to be but the Jewish people do not consider descendants of Ishmael as being the, the children of promise that God had given uh, years ago and today we know them as war today we they are the Arabs. They are the Arab nation. And uh, so they do not consider them as the children of promise as, uh, as we do the Jewish people 
today. Also, so let's back up here and look at verse 6 here. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for that are not all Israel which are uh, Israel. In other words, those that, that God had given the promise to were not all the descendants of Abraham. Because they had a, a, some, they actually had a, another concubine that had six different sons. And they were not of the are not of the faith or are not the chosen people. Uh, when we talk about uh, God's chosen people, there were not all of the descendants of Abraham were not God's chosen people. And this text this morning is dealing with the fact that God chooses or it's God's choice. God makes the choice and we have to live with it. If you want to know the truth, he does the choosing and we do the living. Amen? Apparently, Paul got afraid in his in verse 2 there. Uh, he had, had been basically crying over the fact that Israel was not being saved, that they had rejected Christ, and that uh, they were want, uh, the people that were around him. I'm sure were asking, "Well, Paul, is is God reneged on his promise? He promised us we were were his chosen people. Did he renege on his promise?" Paul was trying to let them know, "No, he did not. But it was only for his chosen people." Do you know this morning when we talk about the nation of Israel, and then the spiritual Israel. Okay? There's a difference. Those who believe in God, who believe in Christ, are the spiritual. And you and I fall in that category this morning. We are descendants of Abraham, spiritually descendants. Okay? We are spiritually we're, We may not be of the lineage of Abraham, but we are spiritually God's chosen people this morning. We are God's chosen people spiritually. Remember this, God's word never fails. The Bible tells us that heaven and earth one day will pass away, but God's word will never pass away. The apostle explains that this promise that God made there's always been a godly remnant of the Israel, Israeli people. Always a remnant. And the failure of the, the Jews to respond to the gospel of Christ did not mean that God failed. Okay? It's hard to believe that, isn't it? But you would think, okay, if we, if we accept Christ, we're saved. But if the Jews did not accept him, does that mean that they're totally lost? Hmm? Let's put it this way. They must believe and have faith in the Messiah. Okay? If they do not recognize him as being Jesus Christ, or they reject Jesus Christ, then can they be saved? The failure of all Jews to respond to it doesn't mean that God's word failed because all of the Israel is not true Israel or is not spiritual Israel. They must be spiritual. So that's what we want to look at this morning. There is an Israel within Israel itself. All of the descendants of Abraham do not possess the promise that God made because the children of Ishmael did not. Only those who work by faith are the true sons of Abraham and they possess, possess the promise. 
So the apostle makes a distinction between the natural seed of Abraham and the spiritual seed of Abraham, which I said already, we are part of that spiritual seed of Abraham this morning. Three Old Testament illustrations of the fact that God's, this is what my message is about this morning, is God's sovereign choice. It's up to him to choose. To choose. Basically, he has chosen you and I to be saved if we believe simply on his son, Jesus Christ. Okay? So we become spiritual descendants of Abraham when we choose to follow Jesus Christ. He gives examples in the Old Testament where God chose certain people to, to be his chosen people. We already mentioned <coughs> Abraham. But he chose between Isaac and Ishmael. By all legal standards, the eldest always inherited, right? But that was not the case with Abraham. Because Isaac was the chosen one. When we get down to uh, when the twins were born to Isaac, Jacob and Esau. Jacob was the younger. Esau was the elder. But God chose the younger. And that was not legally the way it was supposed to be done. The first two show that God made a sovereign choice among physical descendants of Abraham. <clears throat> Verse 7 talks about the child of promise. Nor are they all children because they are Abraham's descendants. In Isaac shall thy seed be called. Abraham had two children according to flesh, Ishmael and Isaac. But God chose Isaac, even though it would have not been the natural thing for them to do in that time. <clears throat> Ishmael was just as much a child of Abraham. We like to sing that song about Father Abraham, right? We're all descendants of Abraham. But are we descendants? Are we, uh, how would you say, natural born? Or, uh, in other words, he was my father, grandfather, great grandfather. Or was he not? The Jewish people were what? They were taking claim, and even today. They claim the fact that uh, they're descendants of Abraham. But are they truly saved? Are they children of promise? <coughs> Only if, if they believe in the Messiah are they children of promise. <clears throat> Ishmael was, was a child of Abraham, yet no Jew, and even today, even today, Jewish people do not recognize the Arab people as being descendants of Abraham. Even though we know they are. Through his son Ishmael, the Arab nation come from him. But today, even today, they would not recognize them. The children of promise are those who, like Abraham, believe in the promise of God. Okay? When the Bible says the children of promise are the children of God, it is not referring to New Testament Christians here. We are talking about the, prom the promises that were made for the Jewish nation back in the Old Testament. 
But being a physical descendant of Abraham, even in the Old Testament, was not insurance that you were going to go to heaven, that you were the chosen people. But God chose a man. God chose a man. In verse 9, for this is the word of promise. At this time I will come and Sarah will have a son. How old was Sarah when Isaac was born? 90 years old. When she heard the prophecy, when she, she was around and she heard God prophesying that she was going to have a son, what did she do? She laughed out loud, didn't she? 90 years old. Let me tell you this. Physically, it's impossible for a 90-year-old woman to have a baby. Okay? The day that is physically, it was then, too. 90 years old, they did not have babies. Okay? It was physically impossible. But only through God could a 90-year-old woman have a baby. Why did she have this thing? Why? Because God promised it. God is sovereign. God can choose what he wants to do. This is the crux of the whole message this morning. God is sovereign. God can choose whoever he wants to do whatever he wants to do. <clears throat> so many people think that well I'm a child of God because my mom and my dad were Christians so I must be a Christian I was born to that family so I must be a Christian too that's the way the Jews looked at it wasn't it my, my, my descendants my parents and my grandparents we're all Jewish people, so I'm Jewish, so I live, but I, I have the same promise that they had. I can tell you this, your children are not saved by you being saved. You're not saved because your parents were saved. Your parents were not saved because of their grandparents, or their parents. We're only children of promise if we have accepted Jesus Christ as the Savior. That's the only way that you and I are saved. Being born, uh, I was trying to think. My daddy was a farmer. Does that automatically make me a farmer? Does it? No. Um, I, I did deal with farm products. <laughs> I, I dealt with chicken, but that doesn't make me a farmer, does it? A Jew, handed down, have always had it in their mind that they are children of Abraham, so they will be okay. But it's only to those that God made the promise. So the crux of the lesson this morning is it is God's sovereign choice as to who will be who. He chose Isaac to be the, the, in the lineage of his son, Jesus Christ, over Ishmael, okay? So God had a plan. When Isaac had kids, only one was chosen. And verse 10 says, and not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. People will argue, okay, God chose Isaac because he was pure. Okay? But Ishmael come from a different mother, didn't he? 
from a, from a slave, from a concubine. That's who she was. Uh, so that people will argue that, well, the reason the promise went to Isaac was because he was pure Jewish. She was a, a free woman and she had the baby. But then their son, Isaac, had twins, had born twins, and they were born of the same mother and the same father. So why did he choose one and not the other? Actually chose the younger instead of the elder. Why did he choose that? That's a good question, isn't it? So, if you question in your heart, he was supposed to, in our thinking, he would have chose the elder. It was Esau, but he chose the younger. And he chose them before they were even born. Okay? So he didn't choose according to what they had done or what they had said or their faith or anything about it. God chose them before they were even born. And he chose the younger. And again, an illustration of the fact that it's God's choice. Mm -hmm. Okay? <clears throat> you look at me and say, why is this man going to heaven? You know why? God chose me. He chose me to go to heaven because I believe on his son, Jesus Christ. We, like the Jewish people, become what? Chosen people. We are the chosen lineage. We are chosen because we believe in Jesus. For no other reason. There, there's nothing that, that would make me be chosen over somebody else. What did they say? The ground's level at the foot of the cross. There's no reason why I would be chosen before anybody else. He said, well, he preaches. So what? That has nothing to do with it. Salvation comes through the belief in Jesus Christ. Nothing added, nothing taken away. That's it. <clears throat> Verse 11. For though the twins were not yet born, had nothing done anything good or bad, so that God's purpose, according to his choice, would stand, not because of works, but because of him that called. You see, your salvation, that's why it cannot be reneged. It's God's choice. It's not ours. All we do is believe and God chooses whether we're saved or not. And he said, if you believe. What does the Bible promise? If you believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. <clears throat> Even as God sovereignly chose Isaac and ignored Ishmael, he chose Jacob, the younger of Isaac's son. The choice could not be because <laughs> either good or evil actions. He did not choose to save me because I was a good boy. Now, I was a good boy, okay? I grew up, I was a good boy. Yeah, you can ask me, I go to second place, you can't ask me, brother and sister. But I was a good kid, I really was. But he didn't choose me to be saved because I was good. Because somewhere along the line, I went bad. Okay? And he still chose me. He didn't show, choose me because I was the youngest of nine kids. He didn't choose me because I had a godly mother. He didn't choose me because of that. He chose me because I became part of the spiritual Israel. I became one of the chosen people of God. In all of this lesson this morning, 
it clearly points out that God chooses who he wants to, to, to choose. Now, what, think about this. Because God chose Jacob over, over Esau. Does that mean that Esau was kicked out? Destroyed? No. Esau still had the choice, didn't he? Esau could still be children of promise. If he believed like they were supposed to believe. <clears throat> Bible tells us that uh, in Genesis 25, 33, that the older will serve the younger when it came to Esau and Jacob. Well, it never really happened the two boys, one of them never served the other. But it is true that the descendants of Esau became the Edomites. And the Edomites did end up serving the Jewish people, didn't they? Or the God's chosen people. In Malachi 1, 2, and 3, it says, in verse 13, Just as it is written, Jacob I loved and Esau I hated. That's strong words, isn't it? He hated Esau. The Bible also tells us in the New Testament, Jesus Christ tells us, that you cannot be a disciple of Jesus Christ unless you hate your mother and you hate your father, and you hate your brother, you hate your friends. You can't be a disciple of Jesus unless you hate them. Now what's he trying to say? That I'm supposed to turn in and say, I hate my mother? No. What he's saying is, in comparison, your love for him, it, the love for your mother would look like hatred in comparison to what you should love him. He didn't say hate him. He said, but in comparison, you should love Jesus Christ so much that everybody else it look like you hate him. It really would. What about the people who refuse to be saved today? The Bible says we are to hate them. Did you know that? Isn't that sad? They could be your they could be your own children. We are to hate all of those who do not accept Jesus Christ as their, as their Savior. But we're talking about spiritually. We're not talking about physically. We're talking about spiritual hatred. If anyone comes, Luke 14, 26 says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, he cannot be my disciple. So looking at the end of this. My problem with study of Romans is I don't have a, a theological degree. I haven't been to seminary. I didn't study these words. So I have to take what I read here physically <coughs> and try to make what I think God is, or is trying to tell us this morning. I went to school and my, my, my degree was not in theology, it was in uh, dirtology, I guess you'd say. I studied dirt. I went to college for four years and studied dirt. And I can tell you a lot about dirt. Okay? I can tell you what will grow here and what will not grow here. That was my that was my 
field of study. Okay. This is a little deep for me sometimes. But we know that the Edomites were descendants of Esau, and Esau was a true son of uh, the son of promise who was Isaac. But it says no Jew would ever think of the Edomites as being God's chosen people. They were not. They, and from the Jewish standpoint, they were actually enemies. The reason being that they did not support they did not support Israel. And I'm telling you, in this day and age, it's a scary thought if we do not support Israel even today. Because that's what happened to the Edomites, the descendants of Esau. God condemned them because they did not support Israel when they needed help. I'm telling you people, we need to be supporting Israel. I want you to understand also, God chose who the lineage of Jesus Christ would be through. But I want you to understand also, God chose Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That we can, as the Messiah, the one that we can look to, the one that we can put our faith in, is Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. And it was God's choice. All the way down, all the way down. Somebody has said that. Why did God choose? Why, why, why Mary? Why couldn't it have been uh, uh, Caroline or something like that? You know? It's because God chose her. Okay? She was no better than any other maiden of the time. God chose Mary. Okay? She was no better than any other maiden of that time. Everybody stand. We're going to get out of this for a few. But God has established the precedent that He chooses. God chooses who's saved this morning. You say, Well, I don't have a choice. Yes, you got a choice. If you want to be saved, God said you can be. You got a choice. And he gave you just one condition. Believe on his son, Jesus Christ. And he said, yes, you become part of the family of God just as soon as you accept Christ as your Savior. And I trust that each and every one here this morning has done it. Maybe this morning you need to pray. The altar will be open for a little bit here. Come and pray. Hey.